Hey, good morning to you on a rainy day. Looks like we got four days of rain here in central Kentucky. Last uh, last weather update. Yeah, if you followed along on the weather predictors, I talked about how to use nature to predict the weather. Uh, I also use an app. <laughs> I'm not opposed to technology at all. Uh, I don't ever want to pretend to be that kind of guy. But uh, you can use both. Uh, we like to think of it like a quality check, if you will, on different tasks. Land navigation, we talk about this a lot on uh, different quality checks. You can utilize, uh, you can take a compass reading. Oh, I thought Tracker saw something. What you got, buddy? What is it? Ah, oh, good boy. Um, you can take a compass reading and then you can orient your map to north to verify that you're there. Look at the surrounding terrain features. You can actually think of where did the sun come up this morning to know basic general east and west. Stuff of that nature to help you quality control. But anyway, uh, that's not the topic of today. The topic of today is check it out. Trees. Uh, I thought I'd take an opportunity to just do some tree identification today to help you. We talk about buds and bark and stuff so much in wintertime because people have difficulty identifying trees in winter. And I don't want to ignore the fact that some of us also, including me at times, have trouble identifying trees uh, when the leaves are out too. So let's let's find a few trees here and identify some and... Let's talk about their uses. Here's a common one. This is the uh, beech tree. Uh, beech trees are the ones that have smooth bark. You can see this little guy right here. Oh, right there, little guy. They have smooth bark. They're the ones that have the eyes on the bark, but the leaves, look at the leaf here. The, re, the leaf has a sawtooth edge to it. You notice the veination. There's a central vein there. You usually see the veination on the back a little bit easier. Veination is central vein and then nearly parallel lines coming off of that. Uh, these, for those that have followed us in winter tree identification, these leaves that are here are the little cigars that we saw during the winter time. A lot of people think that buds come out in the spring they don't come buds come out actually at the end of summertime and they just kind of hang out there leaves fall off and then that's the new leaves next year so that's something to keep in mind let's see what we can find next so here's a hickory tree little guy it's one of the things i like to point out to people that are new to the outdoors a lot of times you'll find that the little trees down on the forest floor have bigger leaf structure than the ones that are much, much larger trees. They're, they're basically competing for sunlight and moisture and stuff of that nature, water, stuff of that nature. And so the leaves down here are much larger. Here's something that makes this leaf unique is that this piece that I have in my hand right here is a leaf. That is a leaf. Hickories have five to seven of those leaflets that make up a leaf. And this is very similar to some other trees that have leaves like this, where you have multiples. Uh, but one of the things I look at is, we've talked about mad bucking horse. Maple, ash, dogwood, buckeye, or horse chestnut are tree species where the leaf stems, if you will, come uh, opposite of one another. Everything else for the most part is alternating. So if I see a leaf like this and I wonder, is that a maple? I mean, is that an ash, which has a similar leaf structure? Or is that a uh, hickory like this one is? One of the things I can look for is look at these, leaf, these stems right here. You'll notice that they come off. That one's here. You come across here and get the next one. Come across here and get the next one. That's what we call alternating. If the branches were opposite of one another on that stem, 
that would be opposite. And the leaves would look a little bit different too. Let's see what we can find next. Oh, um, yeah, let's go back to that hickory. I said I was gonna talk about practical applications. Beech trees, think about this. This is not a bad spot to look at this from a woods perspective. If you, uh, you'll see openings in a canopy and because that area is gonna get a lot of sunlight, even on those trees up there, you'll often see uh, fruits, acorns, hickory nuts, beech nuts, a little bit more numerous right there. And so even in the fall, I'll look up and see where there's openings in the canopy. And if I'm looking for uh, acorns to harvest or something, then I'll go to that area. And so you can look up and see this in the canopy itself. See, there's a one right above my head there. If there were fruiting species of trees right there, that would be a good spot to find acorns that have fallen to the ground. If they're oaks, obviously, or hickories or beech nuts. I find this to be incredibly true about beech trees. Uh, beech trees. Uh, I took a video, man, it's just so hard because I'm just using video on my phone as I am today. And uh, there was a beech tree and uh, half the tree was on the edge of a woodland. It's basically right behind the cabin where I write and do a lot of stuff. And that whole side of the tree was covered in beech nuts and none of the side on the inside of the forest had any beeches or very few really beech nuts at all. So that's something to pay attention to. On the hickory, the one that I just showed you, hickory, small hickory, and I'm not saying do this on a regular basis because we don't want to destroy the environment in the process, but if, you, if you're observing enough of the outdoors and you see you have hundreds of little hickory trees for some reason, it's not going to hurt to take one or two. They make the most excellent cordage for like a bow drill, natural cordage. You can strip a little tree smaller than the size of your thumb, strip the bark up, and make excellent cordage with it. Actually, uh, I had done that in the past, but this is something I wasn't aware of, but um, I'm glad I was taught this. When we made the rocking chairs a few years ago, we took basically a couple of hickory trees and made them everything, everything from the hickory, even the seat. You know, the webbing of a rocking chair? We made that from the strips of inner bark of hickory tree. So the small ones do that really well as too. I haven't done that enough to even talk about doing that on the large scale, but on the little ones, I'll literally cut segments down the bark and strip that out and utilize that. You don't want to use the outer bark. Uh, you'll end up scraping it off. But that's, sorry, I told you I'd do some practical uses and not just be an ID class that, or uh, ID segment today. All right, let's see, let me find another one. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this one on camera because I can't reach the branches, but I think I'll just extend this out. Ooh, man, check out this Craig Cottle with the selfie stick. So weird sometimes. This is gonna work, yay. All right, check this one out, you all. See the leaf structure on this one? These small, tiny leaflets again here. Let me get up here and see if I can get some more. You'll notice they're lance-like. They're alternating along that branch. I actually identify this one from the bark. This is an odd tree here. Check this tree out. It extends all the way over the road here, but um, the bark is really light and uh, really hmm, thin, wispy maybe. I don't know if that's the right word or not. Let me get up there so you can see the bark too. That's willow. Willow, another characteristic. You know how I talk about in any time I've done any tree identification, I talk about location. That's one of the things that people miss often is they want to look at just the physical characteristics of that specific tree, if you will. And you've got to take into consideration where it's growing because so certain trees like to grow in certain places. Willow trees love to grow near water. 
So I wouldn't find that tree, be very unlikely to find that tree in the middle of nowhere. But right here along these two creeks is an excellent spot to find a willow tree. The beauty of the willow tree is it is the, the chemical compounds that are in the stems and the cambium layer of the tree, which is the layer that lays directly underneath the outer bark that we see. The chemical compounds in there are very similar to what they make aspirin from. And so you can chew the inner bark of a willow tree. You can make a tea out of those stems, scrape the bark of the young stems, particularly the, the green stems, uh, boil that, drink that tea, and uh, you basically got a pain reliever. Uh, there's been times where I've used that as a pain reliever, primarily a headache, in the process of just doing things that I do in the outdoors. That's a good one to know, you all. All right, let me, uh, I'll try to find two more today. Oh, and I've got one. I've just got to find the tree. Um, good friend of mine, Gabe, who's the son of Sarah, who is one of our administrators on the Facebook group, uh, sent me a really interesting tidbit about dogwood that I'm going to show you today too. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. That'll be our last one today. So check this out. This one right here. That is the tulip poplar, often comes called the yellow poplar, sometimes even soft poplar. These are two or three little ones right here. This is actually a bigger one right here. Um, the reason I bring that up is because oftentimes a bunch of them will pop up, poplars that is, and because of that they all can't exist and there will be dead ones almost always nearby, a live one. And poplar makes really good um, cordage. You can take the inner bark, the cambium layer of the bark, it shreds off. You can literally, if you can, if you find one that's dead, that's got the outer bark still on it, just peel that off and just scrape with your fingers or a knife if you don't want your hands to get dirty. Then you can scrape off vast amounts of cordage and, or just this pieces, if you will, almost like shredding bark off of an Eastern red cedar. And, uh, then you weave it reverse wrap it into cordage and then you can use it. It's incredibly strong. So that's why I like to find live poplars because there's almost going to be a dead one uh, around every time. Now let's find this. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Gabe. Yeah, there's a the dogwood right there. Uh, Gabe's a student of Nature Reliance School. His mother, his father, his sister, they all have been to Nature Reliance School classes. They're just some of the best supporters of what it is that we do at Nature Reliance School and just just good-hearted people. I mean, they're just kind of people that I'm humbled to be associated with. Just really good people. Gabe has been coming since he was a very young man. Now he's a little bit older. I actually don't know how old Gabe is now, but uh, he's in Scouts, been in Scouts as long as I've known him and does a really good job of it. And he sent me this last one and it's about a dogwood. And he it was, he taught me this, I didn't know. How do you know that this tree right here is a dogwood? This is what Gabe told me. Because of the bark. <laughs> ah, Gabe is an old soul, isn't he? Ah, he's already into the dad jokes. <laughs> oh, thank you for that, Gabe. Uh, that's good stuff. <laughs> How do you know it's a dogwood? Because of the bark. <laughs> oh, man. If you've got a tree joke, you send it my way. I'll put it in a video somewhere, I promise. I love trees. Thanks, Gabe. Come on, join in. Let's learn together. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the video. If you want to stay connected, do this. Check out the website, naturereliance.org. That's naturereliance.org. 
scroll down to the bottom of the page, join our newsletter. That's where we do all the giveaways. That's where we do all the discounts. That's where we do all the cool stuff for all the cool kids. You'll want to be part of it. Come on, join in. Let's learn together.